So, hello there good people on YouTube, Gabi here again. Um, today with a video of the invitational build uh, for the Great Guitar Build of 2023, um, part two. Um, you know, or those of you who watch um, this competition and who know Crimson Guitars um, know that the Invitationals are asked to build instruments that will be raffled off uh, for charitable causes. Um, on their homepage, on the homepage of the Great Guitar Build Off, you will find what kind of courses or the different builders picked and you can support uh, those good courses by A, um, buying tickets for the raffle for the finished instruments and B, by just donating for the good courses. So, um, <coughs> sorry, <coughs> excuse me. Um, with this build, I'm uh, staying true to my approach to guitar building, namely um, making an acoustic guitar. Um, but since the rules are that we should use at least 50% uh, recycled, upcycled materials, which is my thing, um, I looked around uh, and looked what I could use for this acoustic build. I mean, you always find wood for an electric, you just throw things together, that's fine. But for an acoustic build, you would have to have some wood that makes good noises acoustically. So I looked around and see I've got a lot of uh, cut-off pieces here, slices of wood. Uh, and this is just a sample. I've got a lot more of those um, from earlier builds that I've got lying around, I may use those. Then I've got single pieces of leftover wood. Uh, I've got uh, some cherry from flooring. And um, in addition to that, when my wood dealer sends me wood, um, they always sandwich it between um, cut off pieces of spruce. Um, this spruce is not a triple A grade or master grade um, spruce, uh, but still it is um, not construction but tone wood. And if I tap this piece, I see that it has a nice ring to it. And uh, in my last delivery, my sandwich was in between those two pieces. And as it happens to be, those are almost completely book matched pieces. And um, I will see what I can uh, turn them into. And if you're interested in being part of the journey, of course, you can watch the video. Um, you can bid for the guitar in case you like it. In the end, you can make donations or you can just enjoy uh, the process of this instrument becoming an instrument. Um, in the meantime, as always, stay healthy, enjoy and don't forget to be a good person. So let's get started with my acoustic contribution to GGBO 2023, the Invitationals. Okay, since we're required to let you know about our ideas, um, here you see some slats that I took from a bookshelf in an office that was did dismantled at school. Um, they're made of oak and you still can see the holes uh, where the screws used to be to hold them in place. I'm hoping that in uh, the process of the build, when I shape the neck, which this is supposed to become, um, that these holes will go away. If they don't, uh, I will have to think of something to cover them up. Those are the set pieces um, of spruce that my delivery was sandwiched in and here I'm joining them or jointing them and checking out whether I've got straight edges. I like the kind of rough look of them because I think um, the guitar I built here is supposed to look what it is like an upcycled instrument so uh, no fancy covering of what it is but mainly showing that you can do that from used or recycled upcycled materials these are two pieces um leftover pieces that didn't have friends so I decided to join them for um, this build. 
which also inspires the name of the guitar with the Cafeolet, because you know the respective pieces that didn't have friends either. Uh, and I'm using black locust and oak for back and sides. Okay, I'm making the rosette pieces from cut off pieces from those lonely back and side pieces. This is the oak and the other is the black locust and I'm planning on having um, an alternating pattern of them. Okay, even though I built um, a thickness sender that I have at school for my guitar building class at home, I'm still uh, thicknessing the tops and the backs and the sides by hand, so to speak. And I check out whether I have a good thickness by um, checking for stiffness, which you can see here, checking for flipping tone and uh, also tapping it. That's a new jig I made um, for getting the bracing pieces at a radius uh, more quickly than I used to do, but still I go over with them in the radius dish. And send them down a bit so that I've got a nice and good fit. These are cut off pieces from um, necks that I used to make and I use them for bracing. And those pieces are from uh, drawers that were in said shelf. They're of mahogany. You can still see the holes for the dowels. And I made my um, neck and heel blocks from them. Somebody asked me how I uh, managed to keep those blocks from slipping when I'm gluing them in. Just a few cones of salt help here. And I pre-clamped them with smaller clamps before I uh, used the bigger clamps. The bracing I use here um, is Paulovina. I don't know whether that's the same word in English or not, but I'm too lazy to check it up. So it's Paulovina, and uh, I use it um, yeah, as cut of pieces from another wood project that I made earlier, from sliding doors. So here you can still see all the drill holes of the screws that used to be in these slats and I hope they will go away um, when I shape the neck later in the process of the build.
Okay, and I built myself this jig for making gluing the two neck pieces for the scarf joint together a bit easier. So this top thing keeps it in the right position. I clamp it down and then I press the two pieces together using the other clamps. This has worked out well and I don't have any movement of either of the pieces. It's a good thing. This bracing that I'm using for stabilizing the sides um, is actually also, there are also cut off pieces from the wall boards we used to have in our Ola. It's my new sandwich method of um, gluing on tops and backs. Um, I used to do that in a go bar deck, but I have taken that to school in order for my class to use it. But um, it has proven that this method works really well and you don't have to have the go bar deck. So here I glued together some cut-off pieces of sad oak and black locust in order to make my fret markers. And you can see some of my prizes in action um, that I got from last year's PGVO with the routing bit for the binding channels and the Triton router, the mini router. I like it, it's a very good tool. Actually, it turned out that this uh, new jig that I have for making the bracings for the tops and the bags or putting the radius on it is quite useful because I didn't have to do any adjustments here with this top and it went on really, really nicely. I'm very quick here because this is the second pass, don't worry. Here I'm cutting off the fretboard binding from some of the leftover strips of former guitar productions. This is ash I'm using here for contrast and because I had it.
Okay, the binding here. Um, this is cut off pieces from some maple that I had left from a former guitar production. Okay, and here I'm working on the oak neck in order to make uh, the holes go away. And I actually thought that the oak would be harder to work with, but it turned out really nicely. Okay, I was thinking about covering the back of the hat plate with uh, a different veneer as I normally do, but I thought for this project uh, I wanted the natural wood, or the natural upcycled wood to show with all the wormholes and whatever was in there. So I didn't do that and whoever will win the guitar will have to live with it. Maybe next time I try out making the neck of two different pieces of wood as well so that it matches the cafe au lait theme that I've got here. And here is the demo.
So, there you have it, the Café Olé. Mm -hmm.